okay, I got 6,500 RPM today, so it's running a little bit better. Putting out a lot of, a lot of power. EGTs are okay. Altitude's now a couple hundred feet high. Of the ground. And I'll take the flaps off. I'll get a little bit more speed. They sometimes make noise in the sound when I do that. I must make electrical interference or something. Anyways, why, here we are now, going straight ahead. Out that way, I don't know if you can see it or not, but that's that big Goodyear air dock out there. Or used to be Goodyear. Uh, and then over here, that's like a Springfield Lake, they call it. And uh, a nice big field over there in case I had any trouble. Because right now, I'm over top of a bunch of houses and stuff. It's going to be hard to get used to. I moved the camera over to the other side. Uh, anyways, now I think I'm going to get out this way. I've backed off to about 5,500 RPM, which is plenty good enough for a real slow climb. That's good. And it still seems like it's pulling down. You see how we start heading down? So I don't think those flaps are all the way off. So sometimes what I do is I run them down, they can pull down even more, and then pull them back up. Whoa, there, see the difference? Oh, baby, now they're off. <clears throat> Has to do with those limit switches in there. Sometimes they don't, don't stop just right. I think uh, the reason I moved that wingtip camera is I just want to see what it can see uh, being mounted on that side. It probably could pick up me moving the throttle. That's what I was thinking anyway. I don't know if anybody's interested in that, but that's, that's why I moved it. I like the other side better because most of the time you're making left-hand turns. So when you tilt like this, you're going to see ground where with a mount over there, all you see sky and a bunch of clouds. Oh, so, I don't know. Anyways, that's what I'm doing. So now I'm going to throttle back a little bit because I'm, I'm at about 2,100 feet and I don't want to go any higher. Uh, because I'm still too close to Akron Canton airspace. They got big jets going in and out of there. They don't like me getting in their airspace. Uh, let's see. I can turn this way, perhaps. I'm not sure what that is. I'm looking over there. That might be Kent State University. Way over there. That'd be their airport over there could be, and hopefully it's, I don't see anybody around, I'm going to try turning this way here, so you can see, that's the runway there at Akron Fulton, and the, and the big uh, air dock there, that's another airport there, so we got to get out of the way, because they may be coming in this way, so I don't like hanging off the end of the runway not good. Bad enough you got to go across that, but planes could be coming in from out there and heading for that runway. But, usually they're higher than what I'm at. I'm down to 1,800 feet now, so. 1,900 feet. So I lost uh, maybe 150 feet with all the turning and stuff there. So when you make turns, you got to kind of pay attention how much you're losing. You might lose some altitude doing that. Anyways, i got to throttle back now. It's only 5,000 RPM. And our airspeed is right now about 60 miles an hour. And the winds are out of the northwest today, coming this way. So. I think that's about everything you need to know, I guess. I'm just using the wing tanks up there. I had, haven't put my little football, extra long distance football tanks on because I don't need them. And I, I usually fly around with them just empty, but even empty tanks, it's just a little bit of excess weight. I don't know, they probably weigh 
uh, at least five, six pounds a piece. So take them off there, you save some weight. Uh, let's see. Where are we at? We're over Margaret Reservoir. I gotta remember if I'm gonna circle something, I gotta, I gotta turn to the right. I can't do left turns. That's. I don't know if I like that camera out there or not, but at least you can see what I'm doing with the handle and you'll see me put my finger on them flaps to get them on and off and stuff. I, don't. I also made a little change in my little spy camera, but I think my leg's probably going to be mock blocking the view of the instruments uh, unless I'm careful to straighten it out or something. It'll be hard to see what I'm doing there. Anyways. Hands off, we're going about 60 mile an hour. I can goose up the power a little bit. About 5,200 RPM is a good cruising speed for this. Uh, when you got a full tank of fuel, it's a little bit heavy because of that. Now when you get a passenger in, uh, all bets are off, it's all different. Yeah, I, that over there, that is, that's Kent State University. I'm surprised I can see that from down there, but that's what it is. Ah, uh, let's see. As we're coming up on a sand and gravel spot down here, and that's always a good landmark to tell people about. And sometimes schools are good. Uh, there's a school down here I'm going over. But farms usually don't help too much unless you happen to know what the farm is. I know that that farm straight ahead belongs to Bob Eby. That that's Congress Lake Road out there going along there. Uh, and it goes down to Hartville to Congress Lake. Uh, this used to, this is D and K sand and gravel or something like that. I forget what the name of it is. Something like that. And uh, see Bob Eby, he don't farm anymore. His boy or something does. He works uh, right down here in a. That's his house down there, and he's got a little workshop down there. But, he likes restored tractors and stuff like that. So, anyways, I'm kind of sinking here. I gotta goose this up or trim it a little bit more or something. Just a little bit below here. Ah, oh yeah, I did have some nose down trim. No wonder I wanted to go down. Ah, that'll be better there. Just needs neutral trim. Just. Need any anything pushing the stick forward. So okay, let's see the rover we're going over. Let's see, I gotta make a right hand turn here, circle. That's a big swamp. It's actually behind my house there, the swamp. That's great. Uh, that's old Forge Road down there. I'm circling. I'm sure the camera can see that. Uh that's Old Forge Road. This town up here, that's called Brimfield, and that's where I live down there. So I might make a pass over my house a little bit. I don't want to get too low over houses, and I want to have a good field in case the engine quit. I got fields I can make, you know. And I want to watch for aircraft, too, because, ah, they follow some kind of a beam to keep them lined up with that runway sometimes and they, I don't think they're supposed to be doing it when it's good weather they're not supposed to be flying on instruments then but eh, you never know what they're doing so <clears throat> this is my neighborhood here oh I got to go the other way don't I right over top of my house so I can honk my horn by pushing this I don't know if there's any camera that picks that noise up but that's I can honk at my wife, but she's probably inside and don't hear it anyway. Oh, but this is this is the neighborhood where I live down there. The house with the two dormers on it, that's mine. So anyways, and you can see we got fields around here. Ohio usually has quite a few of them, but you can get yourself into a situation where you're in a spot where Brother, if this engine quit right now, I'm going to have trouble. <laughs> oh, it looks like they're clearing something off over here. I haven't noticed that. I wonder what, oh, I know what that is. That's, uh, 
See if I can fly this way, then another camera can see it. They're making roads and stuff in there. That's going to be some kind of a retirement condominiums or something like that is what that is. And I see there's some machinery down there. But they haven't started building any buildings yet. But, but that's what's supposed to go in there. It's kind of interesting the way the roads go. I don't... But I guess they know where the building's going to be. And let's see. I think... Let's go over this way. I think this little lake down here in front of me, that is called Brimfield Lake. It's really like a pond. I think that's what that is. I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure that's Brimfield Lake. See, there's like a dike built along one side, so it's, it's an artificial pond or whatever. Next door neighbor, his his boy Trent had a Trent and Ty, he's got two little kids living over there and they had birthday parties in that lake down there. I couldn't go to it that day. I was supposed to fly somewhere, but uh anyways that's the world famous Brimfield Lake I think is what that is. Now let's see. I'm gonna fly over the Walmart here. It's, I told the wife I sometime I wanted to know where this road past Bernard's went. I think I'm gonna fly over and see. Uh, other than that, not much to tell you about. This is Talmadge Road here right in front of us and the uh, freeway interchange. If anybody from around here is looking at this video, they'll they won't be lost. They'll see what it is. See, way over there you see big building and you see there's like an industrial park over there lots of buildings one of them is industrial tube you could get steel tubing there I don't think they sell aircraft they might they probably sell 4130 tubing if you're making something steel or your airplane's gonna have a steel frame but I don't think you could get aluminum over there anywhere usually have to go out to Clinton to get that they got Clinton aluminum out there they can get you most of what you want but anyways, uh, turn it this way because this camera's messing me up here. Not used to it being on the other wing. Down here straight ahead is Walmart. Next building is Lowe's. This one building over here, that's Menards. But you can see that, that road, that road goes back in there past Menards, they got a lot of, a lot of clear land, a lot of grass back here. Uh, I don't know what they're going to build back here, but I'll bet that's going to be more stores or something going to go in down there. And this may be Dayton Motor Freight, I think, over here where all the trucks are. I'll bet that's what that is. Yeah, I think that's Dayton Motor Freight. Yeah, a lot of trucks there. And it looks like a little pond over there that I never even knew was there. And uh, way over there, just just before that big field that's ahead of us, that's Howell Road, called Howell Road, and that goes all the way up to Akron there, Chapel Hill and stuff. So, anyways, this is the industrial park here make a little turn, you can see all the buildings. I have no idea what they do down there. They got all kinds of businesses. They trucking companies, steel companies, things like that. I don't know. Okay, let's see. I don't really have much other place to go today, so I just mostly testing out these cameras and stuff like that. I want to get far enough away from Kent State and Akron Fulton and Akron Kent particularly to where I'm not gonna bother anybody. But I'm usually too low. I don't I don't go too awful high. You can see if I turn this way, going along the freeway, you see that tower right there ahead of me? I'm not too much higher than that tower. If the top of the tower is below the horizon then I'm higher than the tower. But 
still wouldn't want to run into one of them. And, ah, those Cessna drivers, they they tend to stay away from towers, so I think I'm pretty safe right here. I, I don't think anybody's, I'm going to bother anybody here, you know, it's, I'm out of everybody's way. If somebody comes down here in a 747 and he's this low, he's got bigger problems than me. Anyways, there's new allotments popping up all the time, and uh, pretty soon it's going to be a sea of houses all the way to Ravenna. It's just not, not a declining area, that's for sure. They just build more stuff all the time. I'll take a little flight here over Brimfield Plaza, and it looks like Greenfield Plaza could stand having a new a new roof. It all looks different colors. <laughs> I hope it don't leak. I guess it don't leak. That's what that is down there. You're getting dizzy or sick to your stomach. Let me know. Straight out here. Uh, okay. I think I'll just head more in this direction. And Go past my house again. See if the wife if the wife has her boyfriend's cars there or not. I gotta always check on that. Gotta make right turns. Boy, I'm gonna get practice doing that. Anybody down there? Honk the horn again. I use the horn to get rid of deer off the runway. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to head on out. But you can see I got a big swamp near here, and that's why there's so many darn mosquitoes around here. A lot of low wetlands in there. Oh, now I'm up to about 2,700 feet, which is plenty high enough to keep airplanes away from me. I think I don't want to go too much higher. I don't like getting up to where the big boys are. And of course, my GPS, and I don't. I don't think there's any camera that can see it, but there's an arrow pointing over that way because that's where Mayfield is. So I can't get lost, and it's just a little camping GPS. But that's all I need. I just need a an arrow pointing which way the airport is. Uh, around here, I'm pretty familiar with because I know Mogadillo Reservoir, and, and you know I know this is out on the swampy end of it. You can see what it looks like there. I know which end of it I'm on. And the other thing it tells me is my ground speed. Right now, I'm doing about 63, 64 miles per hour airspeed, but my ground speed is 67, almost 68. Well, that's because the air is behind me blowing this way. I'm going downwind and the air is pushing me. So, I gained a little speed, so we pay attention to the. It's nice to know your ground speed. That way you can say, well, I'm not going very fast at this altitude, so you can go up higher and go at a different altitude. And sometimes if you go up above the weather, if you go up above the clouds up there, ah, you might have a pretty good breeze blowing up there. You, you might be able to really make time if you get up that high. But I don't do that too often. Besides that, it's cold up there. I might have to turn on my heater. Right now, it's plenty hot in here. I got both vents open and the sun's shining in here. And it's, it's plenty warm. Let's see. Outdoor mode, isn't it? Indoor temperature right now. Of course, the sun's shining on the thing, but it says it's 90, 94.4 inside this thing. Must be the sun shining on it. Wow, that's pretty. That's 
pretty warm. At least I got air, good air blow on this nice cool air coming in. And sometimes I pull this hinge pin out and I take this door off there and then just fly it with that open. And it's easy to take this one off. This, this side I take off too, but that takes a little bit more time. But that's, that's good if I need to have that door off and really get some ventilation. All right, up, up to 2,200 feet. And I don't want to go too much higher around here because it could be in somebody's way if I do. Okay, that's the wing foot uh, air dock down there where they keep the blimp and they build blimps down there. It looks like they probably have about two of them in there if they want. It's a pretty long building. But I don't see any out today and the doors are closed, so there's a lot of cars parked there, so they must be doing something. Maybe they're giving a tour or something, I don't know. And uh, Mayfield's over this way. It's 3.6 miles that way, but I'm going to head just a little bit this way, and the reason is I want to stay outside of Akron Canton airspace. There's a big circle over there. i got to stay north of that a little bit, and then when I'm ready to land, then I turn in and go to Mayfield that way, so it don't make people over there nervous in the control tower. They can see me, but because this is an ultralight type aircraft, it doesn't have know a transponder they don't know how high I am they don't know how fast I'm going although if they've been looking very long they know it's not moving very fast uh, then they know we're there but they know all about you if, if you got a transponder it tells them everything they need to know including who you are <laughs> it tells you that Right now, I think that camera out on the wingtip can see a little pond, a little hole out there, and that's a, a walking trail. I don't know what they call it, uh, Buffield Park or Springfield Park or something. It's a metro park, and that trail you see in the field over there, that's for hikers. They can walk around there and do some walking, get some exercise. But it's always a field. I keep those in mind. Certain fields now I got to rule out, like this one I'm going over, because that looks like corn, and you don't want to go into corn. That's no good. That's a last resort. Go into that. That could be violent. Sometimes the fields that are, uh, you know, look real soft and lush and green, that could be the worst one to go into. You go into them if they look brown or if it looks like dirt or something like that, that's probably going to be a better bet. I'm, uh, I'm really a little too high. There's my end of my runway. From this height, you can see Mayfield pretty good. What I'm going to do, since I'm too high, I'm going to make a right turn here around Killian Road to lose a little height. Get down a little bit. There we go. That looks a lot better, doesn't it? You just wanna, you just wanna be able to see the end of the runway a little bit. That's good. And the wind's coming from that way, so it could be a little, a little blustery coming in. But and this right here at the end of the runway is a big hill, and there's a bunch of trees on top of it, so it's a real bad approach. You can't, so you have to. Be careful to keep it down and, and get close to the trees because otherwise you'll be too high. You can't miss them by much. Oh, we're coming in. No flaps on here. Uh, now we're down now, and we're going to put on the brakes here a little bit. That'll slow us down. And to turn around, I'm going to pull up just one brake, see, and that makes it turn a whole lot tighter. It makes a nice tight turn that way. That's it. Okay, now I'll run this back behind the hangar. It's a hangar. Nobody stole a Fiat. All right. Uh, kill the engines. <laughs> 